Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Karen Malpied, and I wrote and directed the play Prophecy. And that's, and that's not why I said that, just so you would know who I was, because it's really my profound pleasure to introduce Professor Noam Chomsky, author, teacher, linguist, preeminent intellectual and moral voice of our time. Um, Noam Chomsky knows more about the causes and effects of American imperialism than any other person alive, and certainly far more than anyone in the government. Uh, so right now, when we need someone capable of cutting through the cant and speaking truth to power, we are graced with his fierce and rigorous and gentle voice. And I particularly want to thank Noam for his generosity in supporting Theater 3 Collaborative, a little tiny theater trying to put on a play about the effects of war that no established theater in this country dared to produce. When I wrote Noam the story of how we realized that we would have to do the play ourselves, he answered, why am I not surprised? Uh, and he agreed to help. It's always been my dream that the theater become again a vital part of the intellectual life of its time. And it's a very great honor for the theater as a whole to welcome Noam Chomsky to the stage tonight. Does this work? Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad that we moved to a different auditorium, frankly. I thought I could shake off a little bit the uh, emotions and the memories that were brought up by the performance a little bit, not too much. Uh, one thing that uh, couldn't help coming to my mind as I was watching it that uh, I don't want to spend time on personal things, but I've had about 75 years of consciousness of the outside world, and I don't think there's been a moment when, at least in the background and often obsessively in the foreground, there was the thought that we've got to do something to stop this horrific war. Uh, too many of them to mention, uh, and they're going to go on, and uh, they're going to go on. We can see them develop right in front of our eyes, unless we do something about it. I'll say a couple of words about that, and then <clears throat> turn to you and see what's on your minds. Uh, I, I just happen to have come back from Lebanon a couple of days ago. It's, uh, I was there four years exactly four years ago with my wife. We uh, traveled through southern Lebanon, met lots of people. We were graciously welcomed in homes. We uh, gave, I gave talks, met lots of people, you know, saw the country. It was a moment of real hope. It's had a terrible history, but that was a moment of great hopefulness uh, and aspiration for a better future. A couple of weeks after we left, uh, the place was leveled. Uh, that was the uh, uh, U.S.-Israeli war. It's a, they operate in tandem. It was a U.S.-Israeli war, which essentially leveled the southern part of the country. Uh, this time, of course, I went back to try to see the places where we had been, where the places where we had been welcomed, the people we had met, some of them now murdered. Uh, places like uh, Nadahia in southern, in southern South Beirut, which was literally leveled. Now, that's the famous Dahya doctrine that an Israeli general proposed for uh, Gaza a couple of years later. Uh, it, it, a lot of it's been rebuilt, amazingly rebuilt. Uh, there's still a spirit of uh, courage and determination, but my sense is of more grimness than there was before because of an expectation that it's going to happen again, and it might. I spoke to knowledge quite, I don't want to mention any names, but very knowledgeable journalists who've been in the region for decades and are convinced that uh, there's a uh, and uh, there's an israel Hezbollah war coming, maybe soon. And uh, 
in that in this it'll presumably be part of an Israeli attack on Iran if it happens. Uh, if it does, this time it'll be an air an all out air war which will probably destroy all of Lebanon. And uh, Hezbollah seems to believe and those who know about it seem to take them seriously, uh, they could, that they have now the capacity to uh, devastate a good part of Israel. So maybe they'll succeed in destroying each other uh, or something like it. And it could be imminent. And it could be part of a much worse war uh, 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 involving Iran or even beyond. Uh, how imminent it is, we don't really know. So for example, Iran has announced, as you may have seen, that they would send uh, ships to Gaza to join the efforts to break the blockade. If that happens, you know, it's finished. It might turn into a nuclear war which could spread without limits. Uh, the, uh, uh, we, we have a president named Barack Obama. If you take a look at his uh, website, I don't know if it's still there, but the website that he, had, he put up uh, in his primary campaign uh, explaining his policies and goals and so on. Uh, there's uh, actually the word Lebanon is mentioned once. Uh, it's full of uh, effusive love for Israel, of course. But the word Lebanon is mentioned once. Uh, namely, uh, he took pride in the fact that as a senator, one of the few things that he did was to co-sponsor a, a resolution in uh, June 2006, uh, a resolution which uh, uh, insisted that nothing be done to prevent Israel from achieving its maximal goals in its invasion of Lebanon, uh, and that uh, Iran and Syria should be punished for helping uh, uh, defend Lebanon from its attackers. Uh, the, uh, I gave, of course, talks in Lebanon. One of them was on May 25th. And May 25th, I didn't know this, is, uh, happens to be uh, uh, Lebanon Liberation Day. It's the one national holiday in Lebanon. Schools are closed, businesses closed. Uh, what's it about? Well, it's about the fact that in the year 2000, uh, the guerrillas, Hezbollah primarily, had finally succeeded in driving Israel out of southern Lebanon, uh, where it had been holding territory for uh, 22 years in violation of Security Council orders, with plenty of atrocities and massacres, actually included a number of invasions, including all of the uh, uh, Israeli figures who are regarded as uh, uh, heroic doves, uh, Shimon Peres, uh, Yitzhak Rabin, and others. But they finally left and uh, withdrew in uh, 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 the year 2000. So this happened to be the 10th anniversary of, of the National Holiday Liberation Day. If you read the uh, press coverage in Israel uh, uh, today, it's, it's full of articles by military figures, uh, other officials, Ephraim Snam, Moshe Arendt, uh, describing how they made a mistake by withdrawing from Lebanon because uh, now Hezbollah is, uh, now, they don't talk about Hezbollah, now Iran uh, is able to renew its aggression against Israel in southern Lebanon. In other words, what they were doing in southern Lebanon, driving a uh, guerrilla war against Israel, was aggression against Israel by Iran. And that's accepted in the United States. Uh, you all know about the flotilla. Uh, you know that uh, Israeli helicopters uh, 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 flew over the boats uh, 